Ah, here we are again. Time for yet another Retroid Pocket 3 Plus settings guide. This one for the Nintendo GameCube. I know it's one many of you have been looking forward to because I've seen some complaints in the comments that you're struggling to get your games working well. So here you go. Let's just go ahead and jump right into these basic default settings. For all of these, I'm going to be using MMJR, not Dolphin for handheld or MMJR2, but Dolphin MMJR, and it should be the same version that was included in the setup for your Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. You can see the version number there in the corner. Now let me quickly take you through all the settings that I use as my starting point when I'm testing a new GameCube game. Here in the General tab, you definitely want this CPU core and turn on Dual Core Mode. As for overriding the emulated CPU speed, turn it on and we'll be adjusting that a lot as we go through different games. You can take a look at all of these other settings. Some of them, like this one, you may need to turn off for certain games, but all the games in this video use it. And I leave audio stretching turned on. It helps the audio sound better in most games. Now. In the graphics settings, as with the other videos, you definitely want the Vulkan renderer. Don't even bother with OpenGL unless Vulkan seems to be causing problems. Here, you want the asynchronous mode or skip drawing. Again, unless you have a game that doesn't work well, that does seem to play games better, faster. Those shaders compile before starting and again, definitely turn on backend multitasking since we're using the Vulkan renderer now that we're on the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. I usually leave this set to auto, but if you're using widescreen hacks or the game supports 16x9 mode, you may need to force it to 16x9 for that game. But as you'll see, each game can have its own settings, so that's all right. Now over in the enhancements section, I go ahead and set the internal resolution to 1.5 as my default, because yes, every game I will show you will play well at at least 1.5, if not 2x resolution. Many games do not perform better at 1x. Why? I don't know, but just enjoy it. These next few options I leave turned off because again, we're going for performance, not necessarily beauty. Although this one here can be on, it doesn't seem to have any impact on performance whatsoever. And these two you generally want on for better performance, but may need to turn them off if they cause trouble in a certain game especially this one here. And although I've got widescreen hacks turned on here, it's up to you really. Some games have their own widescreen mode. Widescreen hacks are problematic in other games and some you'll want to use codes to get working correctly, which I won't get into in this guide. But for now, I'm leaving it on unless I have a game that has its own mode or that doesn't work well in widescreen mode. Now onto the hacks section. These truly are all hacks or shortcuts to try to increase performance in the games. So almost all of them are on, and you may need to turn some of them off depending on the game. Luckily, you can turn most of them on or off from the in-game shortcut menu. On the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus, GPU texture decoding should almost always be off, and then the rest of the things in this menu should start on unless they cause problems. Huh, <sighs> okay, that's all the settings overview. Now let's hop into some games and see how these settings actually work. We'll start with Zelda Twilight Princess, and I want to remind you that you can long press these games and get into a specific game settings section. This is where you can change settings to customize it perfectly for individual games. I'll show you here how I've got Twilight Princess set up although some of these we will also change in-game. In particular, I want to show you I do have it at 2x resolution, and I have widescreen hacks turned off for this game because they just cause problems around the sides of the screen. Now, although this is the PAL version of the game, I do have it running in 60 hertz mode. And if you test it at 100% emulated clock speed, you'll see that it does run pretty stable, close to 30 frames per second, Although with a dip here or there down to say 27 or 28, it's definitely not problematic and doesn't seem to cause any real issues when I'm running around here on Epona.
And let me show you here what a huge performance hit there is if you turn off, say, immediately present XFB. Once I untick that box, you'll notice the immediate difference. I lose, say, 20% of my overall speed. Sometimes it dips down only to 17 or 18 frames per second. So you definitely want that on in this game. You can see it doesn't seem to cause any graphical issues. And already I can hear you saying, but Milner, what if the game slows down when you get into different parts of the game? Well, it may very well do that. I just don't have time to play two hours into all of these games. That's what you're here for. You test the games that you love and let me know. In fact, there is a community spreadsheet which I will link down in the description. Test some games, help everyone out, help the community. But for now, just watch me herd goats and enjoy the fact that this is running very well, even at 2X native GameCube resolution and with no underclocking of the emulated CPU. And just as a reminder, yes, you are underclocking the emulated CPU when you make these changes, which should theoretically decrease the demands on the processor and the emulation in the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. I've had some people asking about that, and that's how it works. You are basically lowering the clock speed of the GameCube's CPU, and if you can do that and have the game still run well, perfect. It makes emulating the hardware easier. Ouch. Bad goat. Next up, let's check out Super Mario Sunshine. And again, this is the PAL version, but running at 60 hertz. And let's see what happens if we turn this option here off. Yeah, not as good. Definitely not as good. Turn skip EFB access from CPU back on and immediately the frame rate and speed pick right back up. What about store EFB copies to texture only? No, that seems to cause an even worse hit to performance. So you can see, for most games, if they don't cause issues, you definitely want these settings on. They can provide an absolutely drastic difference in speed. You'll notice an occasional black glitch in the left corner of the screen. Those seem to go away the longer you play. What about the CPU underclocking in this game? Well, in fact, if I lower it down to about 70%, I don't notice any immediate difference in performance or frame rate, although it may be a little more stable. What if we lower it even further? Say all the way down to around 30. Okay, now you see the problem. If you lower the emulated CPU speed too far, it will say it's running at 100%, but the frame rate will tank. That's how you know you've gone too far. The GameCube CPU is now running too slow and it's hurting performance. You want the emulated CPU to be low enough to maximize performance without being so low that it hurts performance. And by the way, widescreen hacks in this game cause a big mess. So if you want widescreen, you'll have to investigate some gecko codes to do that. Next up, Burnout 2 PAL, and I know I've shown you this game in a previous video, but I wanted to use it as an example. You can see it's not running perfectly here, but that's because I've not got the CPU speed override turned on. Look how low that is, 40%. This is, oddly enough, a game that likes a very low CPU underclock. Mario did not like to go this low, but Burnout 2 definitely does. By sending it down to 40%, it now runs full speed at 50 frames per second, even at 1.5x native resolution. So, remember, you don't ever really know what the perfect underclock is going to be. You'll just have to test games for yourself and then update the community spreadsheet because as you'll see throughout this video and more than most other systems finding exactly the right cpu emulation speed seems to be one of the keys to getting the best performance out of gamecube games
It wouldn't be a good settings video without a little Tony Hawk. So here's Tony Hawk's Underground 2 running at 1.5x, although you'll quickly notice it's not running at full speed. Let's see if we can find the perfect underclock to solve that. Somewhere right around there should do it. Yep, frame rate's already looking better. Let's hit this state park and see how many times I can make Tony Hawk fall flat on his face in under a minute. Now let's revisit Metroid Prime. It's been a while since I tried this one. 60% or so on the underclock seems to be one of the keys to getting this game running well. As well, of course, as all the other standard settings I showed you in the beginning. Also, special thanks to Fruit Loops over in the official Retroid Discord for helping confirm exactly the right settings for this game and although you may notice some slowdown the first time you fire a missile or the first time you roll up into the morph ball after that everything seems to get pretty smooth even when there are reported slowdowns or it says the game's running at around 80 percent speed or so it really feels like it's playing well and that's the most important thing right Now no need to watch me go through this room scanning all the screens. You go play Metroid Prime by yourself. It'll be more fun. As for the rest of us, we can check out Legend of Zelda Wind Waker running PAL 60 Hertz. And this is at 60% speed as you noticed at the beginning. I just wanted to test. See here, I'm getting quite a bit of slowdowns at 60%. Let's see if it actually runs better at 100. And sure enough, it does seem to be performing much better at 100% emulated CPU speed. You don't always need or want to underclock. Like I said, you really just have to test on a game by game basis.
what a view, right? And even at 2x native GameCube resolution. It's looking good. And finally, let's revisit F-Zero GX, that game that just doesn't seem to want to run right. Although, as you'll see here, it's running pretty well. Look, it's not perfect. It really isn't. The sound especially is annoying. But it's running fast, and it's running smooth, and it's running consistent. Now the question is, why? Well, it's because the CPU is overclocked. Yep, the emulated CPU is overclocked to 300%. I know normally I tell you to underclock this thing, but look what happens if you underclock it. That's definitely so much worse. So for this game, and in fact maybe some others, it's worth trying. You may actually want to overclock the emulated CPU. Alright, that does it for this GameCube settings guide for the Retroid Pocket 3 Plus. Now it's time for you to take this information, go forth, test and play more games, and hopefully have some fun playing them. I'll be back soon with another settings guide, so go ahead and subscribe if you would to the channel and click the bell so that you will be one of the very first to know the moment it's posted. And until that time, just keep gaming.